I got a friend writing a lyrics for a song called Like I Need a Hole in the Head. And the first line is, are you all listening? You don't need to shake my hand, it shakes just fine on its own. <laughs> You don't have to shake my hand, it shakes on its own just fine. You wake up one day and you look in the mirror, wonder how you spend all that time. This is the one part I told you, we're going to put those little bars in your ears. You may feel a lot of pressure there. It's only going to be temporary, okay? I look in your eyes and I am filled with confidence. <laughs> This will be on for the rest of the day, right? For the rest of the day, that's right. Try to be stylish about it, please. <laughs> you go downhill and you know, you're thinking for the longest time that this is the way it's going to be and it's just going to get worse. And you can't do anything about it. You can't make the tremor stop. Uh, you know where you're headed. We all know academically or intellectually where we're headed, but we never like to acknowledge and in Parkinson's, you know where you're headed, and there's nothing you can do about it. And it's, it is a feeling of powerlessness. It's hard to imagine how you could live like this. No, that's right. But a lot of people do. Uh, that, Almost really everybody true. knows somebody who's got Parkinson's. My God. I was diagnosed in the spring of 2000. They don't know what causes it or how you cure it. Mm -hmm. But I read they're working on it with stem cells. This is my teenage son, Andrew, taking a break from video games. And this is my trophy wife, Sharon. She's a lot younger than I am. Well, what, 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 what do you want to do again? You want to play tennis? I want to, I want to, I want to be faster than Andrew. Of course, I, uh, I Set was. Set realistic goals. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Walking my dog, Lucky, has become really hard. I'm slow, I'm stiff, I'm shaking. They begin the procedure by making two holes in the skull each the size of a nickel. They'll guide the two probes inside of my brain like I a... I get a great neurologist, a great nurse, and a great surgeon. Chris Calhoun, that's him. I check myself into Georgetown University Hospital. And no s recreational drugs? Nope. Okay. I missed all that. Testing and more testing. I'm anxious to get on with it. quality of life mm -hmm. issue and as you know it's not going to cure your Parkinson's disease I wish it I wish it would right. and um, but what but it really it's the can next do best thing. well it's the next best thing that we have really yeah in it's terms going of to improving quality quiet of life. my symptoms that's that's the goal nobody knows how deep brain stimulation works but maybe it'll work for me so we can see Right here, these are the, the very tips of the electrodes in the subthalamic nucleus, and they're entering through two very small holes in the... Um... Easy for you to say. <laughs> what are you doing now, Doctor? What I'm doing now, Mr. Farkas, is I'm, I'm planning out the, the four incisions that we're going to be making on, on your head, okay? And, um, okay. and then we're going to prepare clean your scalp very thoroughly, and then get going with the actual operation. Okay. Four incisions for a vasectomy, huh? That's right. <laughs> Is that what we're doing? Oh, yeah. I need this operation like I need a hole in my head. But I'll feel no pain when they drill in my brain. At least that's what the doctor said. This is Ray Farkas at Off Center Production. Please leave a message. Hey, Ray. Pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. Now, Mr. Farkas, I have the pedal over here, I think. Uh, this is the part, Ray, where you're going to hear a, a lot of loud noise, okay? Okay. It's not going to hurt you at all, but it's going to make your teeth 
almost chatter a little bit. It's going to be very noisy, okay? But it's not going to hurt a bit. And this is as far under as I'm going to get. It sounds worse than it is. Right? This is as far under as I'm going to get, right, Dr. Kellerman? Okay, ready? Right. I feel fine. I never felt a thing. Yeah, that's I recommend this to everybody. Do that. Yep. Yep. Everybody ought to have two holes in their head. Uh, I remember when my uh, father uh, had uh, Parkinson's and uh, he uh, took the medication for it because uh, there was no surgery or any alternative available then. And um, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. Uh, he uh, started having hallucinations and uh, died of the side effects. I don't know if he died particularly of Parkinson's, but uh, he died with Parkinson's, and it was not a very pretty way to go. I'm lucky in so many ways. I'm lucky in so many ways that my father wasn't. I suppose I'm lucky in so many ways that a lot of other people aren't. This one? I could while away the hours, consult with the flowers, confer with the rain. And my head, I'd be scratching while my thoughts were busy hatching if I only had a brain. Ray Bolger sang that in The Wizard of Oz to Judy Garland. For any individual in trouble or in pain. With the thoughts you'd be thinking you could be another Lincoln if you only had a brain. This is me with pills before the operation. Do the other hand. It takes half my energy just trying to relax, and the other half trying to hide my shakes. Walking, walking. It's it's just crazy. You you can't walk without without thinking about about putting one leg in front of the other. You don't need to shake my hand, it shakes just fine. And this is the new me after the operation. You don't need to shake my hand, it shakes on its own just fine, but no more. Look at that. Steady as a rock. And the other one, too. And you tremble, you're embarrassed. You go out with people and you, you try to uh, hide your arm, hide your leg. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. And you're just totally self-conscious at all times. And I think, you know, people don't say anything to you. Uh, you know that maybe you're covering it up well enough or maybe they're just being kind to you. They don't say anything to you. Uh, uh, but you're so aware of it, it just alters your life completely. Uh, I can do everything that I couldn't do that I'd stop being able to do take a shower, I can take a walk, I can move, I don't fall over when I try to tie my shoes. You, you think these things sound simple, but they're not so simple for a person when he has Parkinson's, but they're simple again. My ex-wife uh, told me on the phone that she always thought I needed brain surgery. You have a brain? <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things I'm looking forward to now is not running races with, but playing with my grandchildren. Uh, I didn't have any hope of that before, or my son. That's worth the whole price of admission right there. I should be worried about two holes being punched in my head. I should be worried about brain surgery. And once in a while, as we get closer to it, and I think about it, I guess I'm maybe a little bit concerned. Just a little bit concerned. What were you concerned about, Ray? It, uh, 
It was like a walk in the park. There was no problem at all. Uh, a couple bumps on my head, but that's all. Uh, and a life of freedom from tremors. What more could a person ask for? brain surgery. It wasn't like the film your father's brain surgery. I said, picture this. They got a drill going into his head. You see some smoke coming out. And there's, there's dad. If I only had a brain. I mean, everybody together. Come I mean, on, beautiful. Can we get some harmony going? Doctors, nurses. My older son, Mark, a producer for C-SPAN, and Danny, a professional cameraman, taped the operation surgery like this, it's unlike a lot of other operations that we typically would do. You know, first of all, the patient is awake, which is uh, unlike most of the operations that we do. And second of all, we need to be able to see Mr. Farkas and examine him during the course of the operation to test the effect of the stimulator. While daughter Julie hangs out in the waiting room with Sharon. Amazing. The brain feels no pain. Amazing. Amazing concept. It's easier on me than it is on them. When I called mom, I started crying, and I couldn't get any words out. And she's like, oh, my God, is he dead? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's doing to me. He's not shaking anymore. Manjeet, where are you, Manjeet? Someone else you need to meet. Manjit Sangar, that that's Dr. Sangar to you, Manjit to me. I saw Manjit in <laughs> Dallas, and she told me about the operation. He's, uh, he's definitely in his prime. I mean, he, he actually looks like he's enjoying himself. You know what, that's what I thought, too. When I walked in there, I saw him, and he's talking to everybody and giving basically a running commentary. Uh -huh. He did look as though he was enjoying he's it. He's in his element. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. even came up to D.C. for my surgery. I tell you, you know, this, this has all come about because of you. This group of nerve cells is hyperactive. It's firing too much. And we think this is what gives rise to the abnormal movements, the tremor, and so forth, which occurs in Parkinson's disease. Are you putting the electrode in there, Dr. Calhoun? That's right. It's already in. Oh. We're going to be we're going to be testing it here in when just a minute. When are you going to turn okay? me on? Oh, Mark. <laughs> My left foot seems to have stopped. Yeah, I agree. Right, right, right. Well, my right is still. Right. Yeah. Now the stimulator is disconnected now. And if you look, his tremor is now back on the left hand side. Yeah. You see the difference? Wow, what a difference. Boy, I'll tell you. More alternating current. You know, it took probably about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, and they, they finally got to the right spot. And you could see that the uh, shaking in that side of his body had stopped. So the probe went into the right side of the brain, and then the shaking in the left side stopped on both the uh, hand and in, the, on, in his feet. The stimulator will be completely implanted, but it still will be off. And we'll turn this on, you know, in, in about a week. Later, they implant a couple of batteries in my chest. I'm glad I'm not awake for this one. On the tips of these wires are four small platinum contact points that we're actually stimulating with. The pulses to the electrodes seem to override the bad signals. That's as technical as I'm going to get. I guess there's some people who are adverse to going through the surgery simply because it is surgery. No, that's right. That's right. And it's, you know, it's not for everyone. And uh, people have to understand what the goals of the therapy are, uh, which are mainly to, to improve, you know, your quality of life. We know, unfortunately, it won't cure the Parkinson's disease. Right. But, but it really can help improve the quality of life for the patients who have the surgery done. And uh, I would do these operations all day long. Okay? <laughs> As you did <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Every day. That's just uh -huh. how much I, I like doing it. And the reason is just because I've seen 
how much it can really help people. Right. Mm. <laughs> okay. Thank All right. You. I'll check on you later. Okay. I'll be here for a little while. Okay, yeah. good. I'm enjoy. looking for some breakfast. Enjoy your breakfast. I'm looking for some breakfast, breakfast, doctor. All right. Get me some food. We're going to get you a big juicy <laughs> omelet or something. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Ray. I'm Thank glad you. you did so well. Thanks so okay. much. Thank you. All right. Go ahead. Right. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, mm. Is everything okay? <laughs> This is the programmer that we're going to be using to turn the, the stimulators on. Waiting for the major dramatic moment, but little by little it'll be fine too. You know, nobody promised me this operation would take care of everything. I still have balance problems, but the big ones, the slowness, the stiffness, and the shakes are pretty much gone. Thank God, and Manjeet, and Chris Calhoun. I've got my life back. At about five o'clock, I said, hey, what's up, Doc? I'm no longer a surgery virgin. And not to be sappy, but I feel so happy. I wish I could marry my surgeon. Because they poked and they probed and they pushed and they pinched every inch of my old sorry carcass. And they sent me home, mate. And I'm feeling just great. Like a state of the art in Ray Marcus. Hey Ray, turn on your batteries and pick up the phone. Because I, I was at Dad's office when the, the musicians were playing the song, and the doctors actually, two of the doctors and the nurse were there in their in their coats with their name tags on it. And I was just calling home and saying, hey, I'll be home, you know, 10 o'clock or so. And Cindy said, what are you doing? I said, well, we're making... Grandpa has somebody who's written a funny song about his brain surgery. And Sydney said, but brain surgery is not funny, Daddy. I said, well, here's why I think it, it, this could be funny. And, you know, it's, I think Grandpa wants to make it humorous for people to let them know that it's okay to have things like this done to themselves, to make light of it. it will make people feel better. That's not so bad. And she said, but it's brain surgery, Daddy. It's not funny. And so I couldn't really explain to her. But when I walked into his office and I see the doctor sitting down there and you hear the, you hear the head surgeon singing the song that Dad's friend has concocted about gotta drill a hole in his head. <laughs> then you understand how it could be funny. What the future might bring, I don't believe in destiny. But right now I feel a little bit more like the guy I used to be. I need this operation. These are my kids and my grandchildren. We'll have each other to play around with for a while. I feel no pain when they drill in my brain. At least that's what the doctor said. Life's too nice not to roll the dice, and my tires still got some tread. So to take my best shot at the time I got, I gotta get a hold.